Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my reading journey. Hope you're all doing great and we continue with the final part of the door of unrest. So the guy claims that he was born in ancient years and he lived many, many years since that time, which is fake, right? And then he strangely disappears. So we're going to figure out what happened to him. So that night I was foolish enough to take down some dust covered volumes from my modest shells. I search, I search Her Hermippus, Redivius and Salan Salaf Salafel and Perus collection in Wayne, and then in a book called The Citizen of the World, and in one, two centuries old, I came upon what I desired. My hope either was indeed come to Paris in the year 1643 and related to Turkish spy, an extraordinary, an extraordinary story. He claimed to be the wandering Jew and that but here I fell asleep for my editorial duties had not been light the day Judge Hoover was the Pagos candidate for Congress having to confer with him I saw his home early the the next morning and we walked together down the downtown through a little through a little street with which I was unfamiliar did you ever hear about did you ever hear of Michael Eder I asked him smiling why yes said the judge and that reminds me of my shoes he has for mending here is his shop now. And that reminds me of my shoes he has for mending. Mending. Here is, here is his shop now. Judge, Judge Hoover stepped into a dingy small shop. I looked up at the sign and saw Mike O'Bother, boot and shoemaker on it. Some wild geese, geese passed above, honking clearly. I scratched my ear and frowned, frowned, and then trailed into the shop. There sat my wandering Jew on his shoemaker's bench, trimming a half, sh half sole. He was drabbled with dew, grass-stained, unkempt and miserable. And on his face was still the unexplained wretch, wretchedness, 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 the problematic sorrow, the assort, esoteric woe that had been written there by nothing less, it seemed, than the stylus of the centuries. Judge Hoover inquired kindly, kindly concerning his shoes. The old shoemaker looked up and spoke sanely enough. Sanely. He had been ill, he said, for, few, for a few days. The next day the shoes would be ready. He looked at me and I could see that I had no place in his memory. So out we went and on our way. Old Mike, remarked the candidate, has been on one of his sprees. He gets crazy drunk regularly once a month, but he's a good shoemaker. What is the history? I inquired. Whiskey epitomized George Hoover epitomized. That explains him. 
I was silent, but I didn't. I did not accept the explanations, and so when I had a chance, I asked. Old man, man sellers who browse daily on my exchanges. Mike Obaid Bader said he was making shoes in Mon Montopolis when I come here going on 15 years ago. I guess whiskey's, whiskey has whiskey is his trouble. Once a month he gets off the track and stays so a week he's got a ring rigmarole 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 something about his being a jew peddler that he tells everybody nobody won't listen to him for anymore nobody won't listen to him anymore when he is Sober and ain't such such a fool. He's got a side of books in the back room of his shop that he ra reads. I guess you can lay all his trouble to whiskey. But again, I would not. Not yet was my wandering Jew rightly constrained for me. I trust that woman may not be allowed a title to all the curiosity of the world. So when Monto Mono Montopolis, oldest inhabitant, some 90 score years younger than Michael Eder, dropped into a choir, Promul promulgation, promulgation, in print, I siphoned, siphoned, his perpetual trickle of rem reminiscence in the direction of the uninterpreted an interpreted maker of shoes. Ankle Abner was a complete history of Montopol Mon Montopolis bound in butternut. Obader he qua quavered, quavered. come here in sixty nine. He was the first shoemaker in the place. False fox generally considers him crazy at times now, but he don't harm anybody. I suppose drinking upset his mind. Yeah, drinking very likely done it. It's a powerful bad thing, drinking. I'm an old, old man, sir, and I never see no good in drinking. I felt disappointment. I was willing to admit drink. In the case of my shoemaker, but I preferred it as a recourse instead of a cause. Why had he pitched upon his perpetual strange note of the wandering Jew? Why his unattainable? unutterable grief during his aberration. I could not yet accept whiskey as an explanation. Did Mike, did Mike or Butter ever have a great loss or trouble of any kind? I asked. Let me see. About thirty years ago, there was something of the kind, of the kind I recollect. Montopolis, sir, in them days, used to be a mighty strict place. Well, Michael Barber, Bar Barber, Barber. Well, Mike O'Bader had a daughter then, a right pretty girl. She was too gay 
a sort of montopolis. So one day she, she slips off to another town and ru runs away with the circus. It was two years before she comes back, all fixed up in fine clothes and rings and jewelry to see Mike. He wouldn't have nothing to do with her, so she stays around town a while anyway. I recall the man folks wouldn't have raised no objections, but the woman egged them on to order her to leave town, but she had plenty of spunk, spunk and told them to mind their own business. So one night they decided to run her away. I crowd, a crowd of men and women drove her out of, of her house and chased her with sticks and stones. She runs to her father's door calling for help. Mike opens it and when he sees who is who it is he hits her with his fist and knocks her down and shuts shuts the door. But and when he sees who it is, he hits her with his fist and knocks her down and shuts the door. And then the crowd kept on chunking her till she ran clear out of town. And the next day they find her drowned, drowned dead in Hunter's Mill Pond. I mind it all now. And that was 30 years ago. I, le I leaned back in my no rotary, non rotary revolving chair and nodded gently like a mandarin at my paste pot. When all my Mike has a spell, went on Eichel Abner tapidly, tapidly. Garlos, Garlos, tapidly Garlos. He thinks he is the wandering Jew. He is, said I, nodding away. And Uncle Abner cackled, sacred, sacred, and sin, and sin, and sin. In sin, in in at the at the editor's remark, for he was expecting expecting at least a st stick fall in the personal notes of the bunch. Uh, okay, guys, I just barely understand. Well, how that ended, how the story ended, and yeah, just, yeah. Anyways, we're gonna continue with the next story tomorrow. See you then. Thank you for joining. Bye.